Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Modicon M221. I'm your host Leandro Mada and in this video we're going to talk about how we can configure the PTO in the software EcoStructure Machine Expert Basic. So let's go to the presentation. So in the previous video we have, we have seen the explanation about the PTO and PWM. So now we're going to focus on the configuration of the PTO. So if we go here, we can see this nice graph that I have done, okay, with the difference whether we have um, to configure the output of the PTO on the M221. So, full mode here. So, one thing that we should remember here is that if we use the pulse direction, we need to use one fast output, and if we use the counter clockwise clockwise we just need to use two so bear in mind that if you use the pull direction then you you have the possibility to use another mm, axis otherwise here you're going to consume the um, two axis in one okay just bear in mind that so knowing that in order to configure the ptos we just need to go to the configuration tab that we have in the top then depend on the controller that you have okay because if you want to use the pto it's important that we have transistor output otherwise it's not going to work and this option is not going to be enabled in your case okay they're going to show you for example if i have a empty project over here you can see i'm using the m to the one ce24r and you can see over here there is no pulse direction so if I use this one, transistor output, we have the pool generation over there. Okay, let me just up a check. Here, the M. Okay, it doesn't have. And if I use this one, transistor, I believe it has. And there we go. Okay, you have the configuration over there available for, for you to use. So we go back here to the presentation. Then once you are, once you have this, you should be able to see this option over here, okay, which is the post configuration. And depending on the controller, if final round you have more PTOs. Let me just double check that with you. If we use this one for T, I believe you only have two PTOs. Yeah. So bear in mind that you have up to two PTOs, okay? So when we have in the configuration that I'm going to show you, okay, here, if you use pulse direction, you have the possibility to use two axes. If you use the PTO as clockwise, counterclockwise, you're going to use the two outputs available for PTO for one axis, okay? So bear that in mind. So once we have this pull generator, possibility we need to click on this square in order to access to the configuration then once you select and not configure we have this output okay we already covered this part okay now is the turn of the pto so once we select the pto output it gives us the two ways pull direction or clockwise counterclockwise as you can see over here, if you use the clockwise counterclockwise, so you can see that it used the two fast outputs that we had on the controller. And if you use the pull direction, it's used one of the fast outputs for the pulls, and the direction we can use any other normal output. So if we go back over here in the software, pull generation, PTO, pull direction, and you can use any of the outputs available for the controller. If you use counterclockwise, nothing we can change it. We only have one axis available. Okay, it doesn't allow me to use PTO once again. But if I use pulse direction, for example, this one, it allows me to use another axis for this. This takes the second fast output and then I can use two axes. 
So let's go back to the presentation. So once we have configured the output, there are additional parameters that we can configure. For example, the backlash that is related to the the how can I explain it? the distance between uh, the mechanical part when you go forward and reverse. This is the backlash. So you can compensate that using this parameter over here. And this is the value from zero to this value. Okay. Then another parameter that we have is the limits. We have the possibility to configure limitations, okay, via software. So this is the the range that we can go, okay, and this is the operation zone. So if the actual position that we it's not like we have the feedback, but uh, when we are sending the pulses to the driver, the the end to one start counting those pulses. So if we count those pulses, the software is able to to compare the actual position that we have with this uh, sonar operation, the limit switch. the software switches in order to activate an error in the software okay so that's the idea so if we go back here we had the possibility to configure these two values over here and if the outer position reach those values then we have some errors that we can identify along with this okay with the limit switch we also have hardware position okay the limit switches okay that we can use in our one of our uh, function blocks and in order to read those code that we had over here there is a function block called read access error that allows us to see this in action okay we're gonna cover that later so don't worry so how we can add this read access error we just need to go to the programming tab let me just show you quickly programming tab here you have the possibility to select the pto and we have for the motion and then administrative here in administrative we have the possibility to select read access error once the read access error is in here we just need to link to an axis pto zero apply and then we should be able to read this axis error ID that we should be that should be one of these values in case we reach the just delete all this one of these values that we have over here okay so now if we continue with this okay so the other parameter that we have in the configuration as we see here okay we have already called mechanicals software limitation that you can see if you have enabled you have enabled this sonar operation if you don't want to use it just uncheck this the other parameter is this which is the motion profile so as i mentioned before here we have the possibility to send pulses that will help us to send the axis to an, uh, a specific position but uh, what we need to configure here is the frequency of those pulses and depending on the frequency uh, the software understands which is the velocity that the driver needs to go so that configuration is done over here so we have the max velocity which is uh, 100 kilohertz that it's linked to the uh, to the limitation that we have on the digital output which is over here this is taken from the catalog from the hardware manual sorry and here you can configure the limitation from the graph on the motion profile that we have okay so you can see over here the max acceleration which is in hertz the frequency in milliseconds and also we have the stop and the max deceleration okay we have the max velocity and this value can be this or lower okay because we have the limitation on the digital output okay let me just go back to the presentation 
So another parameter that is important, it's not mandatory, but it's important to have it, is the homing. So if we want to make a movement, it is important to be uh, to be related to something, to the home position that we have. So if we, we have this function block over there, which is called the mc underscore home underscore PTO, that allowed us to make a homing movement uh, for the axis. So if we if we have this home function block to use for the axis, then we need to uh, define a reference here, which is this configuration. Okay, and you can link that to uh, one of the digital inputs on the controller. You also have the possibility to specify how it's going to be this. Uh, this sensor that you're going to have if it's normally open or normally closed. And da, 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 let me just change the view here. And this block is also um, in the administrative, no, in the movements. Just double check. Here. Just delete this. So basically, if we want to execute a movement and a specific movement when we are executing another one, okay, we can use the touch pro in order to activate this movement and the touch pro will be linked to a specific digital input. Okay, so that's the idea that but we are covering that later. Okay, but that is something important to know. If you want to use touch pro, you need to configure that here first. And in case you want to change some of the parameters that are already configured over here in the configuration of the PTO, okay, you can use these administrative blocks that are over here. Read param, read param, and write param. So in case you want to use an HMI in order to change those configurations, you can use this to function block okay but i'm going to cover that later i want you to focus in how to configure the pto and then how we can make the home or different movements in the controller so uh, this is it for the configuration of the pto we covered that we are going to cover later how to make the movements and the different things that we should know about the PTO. So thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one. Thank you.